In this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how to integrate a 3D model into a photographic backplate using Adobe Stock, the Substance 3D Asset Library, Substance 3D Painter, Substance 3D Stager, and Photoshop. Let's begin by gathering our assets. First, we need our robo. For that, we are going to head over to the Substance 3D Asset Library and download the FBX file. For the 2D elements, let's check out Adobe Stock. Here we will download this lovely photograph. The thing I'm looking for is enough space to insert my 3D object and still have a nice overall composition. Now that we have all of our base assets, let's head over to Substance Painter and kick off our creation process. First things first, let's import the asset. Then we need to do one crucial step for truly unleashing the power of Substance Painter, and that's to bake some texture maps. Baking these texture maps allows the software to analyze the model for things like thickness, curvature, and other attributes, so when it comes time to add things like dust, dirt, scuffs, and rust, it can build those in areas that make the most sense for that object. In order to create these masks, we just need to click on Texture Set Settings. Scroll down and click the button that says Bake Mesh Maps. This will open a dialog box to help set the resolution of your maps. For me, I lean on the side of higher resolutions. I set the anti-alias samples to subsampling 4x4. Then I click through ambient occlusion, curvature, thickness, and bent normals, and turn them all the way up. Then I click bake selected textures. Once that is complete, we're ready to go. So initially, my gut instinct was always to jump straight into color when starting a project. With more and more experience, I'm finding it better to start by adding some micro detail. This is because when I jump straight into color, it's hard for me to see anything else. And when I'm getting to the point where the asset just isn't looking bright and I'm stuck in color mode, I just can't see anything else. When in reality, it's usually something like the texture of the material that isn't right or the overall surface bump that isn't right. With this project, we are looking at an old beat up rowboat that has a bunch of scuffs, dings, and scratches all over it. If anyone has tried to move a rowboat from the water to anywhere on land, you know that boats get pretty beat up pretty quickly. So I'm going to create a fill layer that only affects the height. I will recess that height a little to something like negative 0.02. Then I will create a black mask and find a nice grunge map that gives me that well-used look. For that, I'm going to try the grunge dirt scratchy. If you slide the balance around, you can see it does a great job of clumping the damage and that feels really natural to me. Let's keep it there and now I can say that we are all ready to build more color and other attributes into this robo. The question I ask myself now is what is the base material of this boat? For this, I'm going to say it's built out of wood. It's important to build up our objects similarly to how they were built in reality because Eventually, we're going to start to strip away some of the paint that's on top, and we want it to reveal the natural element underneath, which in this case is wood. So let's grab this wood rhododendron. We're going to set that to project in a triplanar fashion so it doesn't care where all of our UVs are laid out. Then we can position the wood grain in whichever direction we want. Let's just scale this into place so it feels right to us. Also, I believe this specific wood is from our asset library, so if you need to grab it, all you do is click the little asset library icon on the screen left side and find that material in our Creative Cloud desktop app. Then just click this little arrow and say send it over to Substance Painter. Easy peasy. Okay, we've got some micro detail. We've got our raw wood robo. Now let's paint it up. First things first, let's grab our color. For that, I will take a sample from a boat I found on Adobe Stock. I love this blue-yellow combo, so I'm going to sample from here. If we were painting a perfect brand new coat of paint, it would be super easy. All you have to do is set the color, make it the roughness that you want, and that's it. But this is not a new coat of paint. There is a story that needs to be told about being left out in the rain, splashed with water, gusts of wind blowing sand against it, so we need to wear this paint down. There's a couple of ways to do that. First, let's add a black mask to isolate our paint in certain areas. Then we are going to add another fill layer and grunge map. This grunge map is called Leaky Paint. Let's make that triplanar and slide the balance to where we want it. Next, we're going to look at our reference and notice something a little surprising. The paint on the boat that is actually in the water is pretty well intact. It's only the parts near the top and inside the boat that are really scuffed up, so we're really going to want to isolate that. We add a paint node and change the layering method to divide. 
I'm going to grab my favorite Dirt 1 brush and paint out the bottom part of the boat. If ever you're doing this and find that the transition is too abrupt, you can also create a second paint layer with a 50% opacity to paint in the gray area to smooth out that transition. Okay, and now we are going to do the same thing but with yellow paint. We also want to isolate that yellow paint to certain sections of the boat. For that, let's click the geometry isolation box and unselect everything and only select the areas we want. Let's add that same grudge map to the yellow layer and randomize the seat. Next up, to add a little detail to this robo. I'm not a man of the sea, but I always happen to see these random number letter combination on the sides of boats. Also, I thought it's a fun chance to add a little detail and maybe a little Easter egg from your own life. So let's create a new layer. We want to put the color to black and create a mask with a fill. Inside that fill, we're going to select one of the font options built into Substance Painter and type in what we want. For me, I'm going to add my wife's initials and her favorite number. Now let's position this text on our boat using our planar projection method. This will give us a little box that we can position over the boat where we want the font to appear. We can rotate that box to change the direction of the projection and don't forget to turn off repeating so it only appears once. Now that we have it where we want it, let's rough it up a little bit. We can multiply a scratchy paint grunge map on top and then add one of my favorite nodes ever. It's a filter called the slope blur. This is a really powerful blurring tool to help create anything like weathering or aging. It's a really great one and I highly recommend you play around with it. Next, looking at our reference, we see a lot of white paint splatters on the boat, especially on the inside. So let's add a fill layer of white paint and do another leaky grunge map. We use the geometry isolation tool to put all this inside the boat and increase the contrast to tighten that appearance of these trips. And you know what? There's also some black painty looking things in there, so let's add those in there too. Before we go further, let's add a base material on the little hooks for our oars. You may also notice that I've removed the oars from the rowboat. That's because in context of this image, I just don't think that you would store your boat with the oars actually in the water, right? Again, I'm not a man of the sea, but that just makes sense to me. But the hooks would definitely still be there. So let's add a little material for those. My little backstory for whoever built this boat was that they wanted it a little bit flashy. So perhaps they you know, painted it these bright blue and yellow colors. Let's say they painted the hooks a nice bright gold. So I will start there. Okay, don't worry. These will get roughed up soon enough. So let's hop back into our main boat texture set and add some dirt. I will throw our rumbly dirt soil on there and remove the height because really I'm just looking for the color and a little bit of variation in the dirt. Now, to apply the dirt, we are going to leverage those mesh maps we created earlier with one of our generators. We actually have a dirt generator that will allow our dirt to build up in the areas that we expect dirt to build up in. To get this, all we have to do is click the button and find the dirt generator. This comes with a ton of controls in the parameter windows to really help us dial in this look. But again, looking at the reference, there's a vastly different amount of dirt inside the boat than outside the boat. So I'm going to paint some of the dirt off the sides and actually create a second dirt layer to add additional dirt inside the boat. We also want to spread that dirt onto our little ore locks, so right click, instantiate across texture sets, and select the hooks. This will create an instance of that dirt onto the locks as well. Looking at it now, everything is good, but it's all just feeling a little bit soft. Let's scuff it up a little bit more. To do that, we're going to add another layer of dark, almost black gunk. And for this, we're going to use the generator called Metal Edgeware to isolate it to just the corners and the edges of surfaces. As always, we love our slider so we can dial it in and instantiate it across our locks. But it's not looking fully scuffed up yet. What if I gave it a little bit of that negative height too? Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I think we're ready to send this over to Stager and start integrating it into our stock image. To do that, all we have to do is select File, Send To, Send to Substance Stager. It'll take a second to load, and then we'll find ourselves in Substance Stager. If your camera is inside the boat, simply hit the F key to frame the whole object. You can see that out of the gate, our boat is positioned under the ground plate and singing a little bit. So we're just gonna use the move to ground button to put it back in place. Next, we wanna integrate this with our stock image. For that, we need to create a camera, place the stock photo as the background and select match image. This is using Adobe Sensei AI technology to analyze the photo and try to match the lighting and camera placement of the original photograph with our CG elements. 
In this case, since we're on water, it's probably going to have a hard time finding the ground, so we can just manually position the camera where we need it to go. To see the full effects, let's turn on our ray trace option. Okay, so there are a couple things that look off to me. First, we are missing the reflection in the water. For that, we just need to select our environment, go into the ground settings, turn on reflection opacity, and turn it all the way up. Don't worry about how sharp it is, we can adjust that later in Photoshop. Another thing is the position of the boat. Sure, it's on the water, but in reality, boats do sink down just a little bit because of the weight, so let's just slide that down in the Y direction a little bit. The final thing for me is the lighting. Yes, Sensei does a great job giving us a base of lighting, but it's not always perfect. This scene is very overcast and soft, but our 3D boat is seeing a little bit more harsh light and kind of a specular highlight. No problem, we just click on our environment, go into our lights, and see what's up. I see that we have something called our backlight, which is actually pretty bright and small in size. So let's increase the light source size, this will soften the highlights, then we will reduce the overall intensity to make it feel like that overcast day. Alright, there we go. Okay, now it's time to render this out as a Photoshop file in our render window. Make sure you have the proper camera selected, make sure the file is named correctly and being written to the right place. Click Render, and once the render is complete, just click to the right of the thumbnail and say Edit in Photoshop. First thing in Photoshop is I want to isolate this reflection so I can do my thing. Easy enough. By default, Stager gives us our CG elements separate from the photo. So let's duplicate that render twice and name one Reflection and the other Robo. Now we can use the ID mask provided by Stager to isolate the boat. Then we just delete the boat from our reflection layer and delete the reflection from our original render. Now we can make our changes to one without affecting the other. So, the reflection. Looking at the real boat and its reflection, you can see that the reflection is ripply, especially as you go further away from the base of the boat. But you'll also notice that it's darker than the boat itself, and it's slightly more blue. So let's shift our reflection too by adjusting the levels and color balance. Now onto the ripples. For that, I duplicated the reflection layer and again made one for the ripple reflection and one for the crisp reflection. For the wavy reflection, I'm going to add a couple of distortions, wave and ripple. The wave gives it broader distortions while the ripple mimics that tighter warble. So now I will blend the two reflections together and allow the area just around the base of the boat to go slightly crisper. I also think my boat is getting a little bright around the base, so let's darken that down a touch as it approaches the water. Okay, so now let's take a look at the boat itself. Whenever I'm working on something like this, I always think about what an old compositing supervisor told me when I was working on films. If you can take your CG object and match the white point, the black point, and the film grain of the original background plate, you are 90% of the way there. So let's first look at the white point and see if we can't tone that down a little bit. For the black point, if you look at the real boat, you'll actually see a little bit of fog mixed in there, especially as you go towards the back of the boat. So we're actually going to grab our depth pass and use that to drive some fog in our CG boat as well. Also, I always love to add a little light wrap to my elements to make them integrate a little bit better. For that, I just add a little bit of the background over top of the CG objects right around the edge, just a few pixels, then you're going to blur it, change it to the screen operator, and then bring it down so it's being added in ever so subtly. The last thing is that film grain. So in film, there is a film grain that is in the shot footage. But in a still photograph like this, they are generally pretty clean. So one thing that I occasionally do is add a super subtle amount of grain over the entire image, both my CG stuff and the real backplate. This will kind of bring everything together and help it all feel integrated. You can either do this in Photoshop using some of the native tools, or you can grab a film grain image from Adobe Stock and layer that over the top. And there you have it. I was able to use Adobe Stock, the Substance 3D Asset Library, Substance 3D Painter, Substance 3D Stager, and Photoshop to integrate a full CG boat into a photographic backplate. This is something that used to take me about a week to do, but I was able to achieve this image in just a few hours.